One of the biggest influences today that I believe that is a satanic influence comes to us through media. It comes through the movies, through the music, through the television, even the news, even your nightly news. The, 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 the news broadcasters, all of these, these media, these sources of information are, are a huge influence and Satan has infiltrated these mediums. I'm not saying the medium itself is bad. I'm not saying that you know, uh, the, the, the technology of a motion picture is evil. I'm not saying the technology of, a, of you know, audio recordings or, or any of this stuff. Right? The, none of them are inherently bad or wicked or evil. But Satan has definitely gotten involved to use these mediums because they're so effective at teaching and at um, propaganda, mass propaganda. To, to steal a line from InfoWars, there is a war on for your mind. This is true. There's a it's the spiritual battle in the Bible, but there really is a war of, of ideas. There's a war of, of, of righteousness versus wickedness. There's a war of, of biblical truth versus everything else, which is versus world religion, versus Balaam, versus satanic religions. There's always been this going on, and, and it's a struggle. And, and because it's a spiritual war, we're not fighting this with swords and guns and, and shields and stuff. It's, it's with words. And it's with ideas and actions. So, um, unfortunately, though, the, I believe is with Infowars is that they, uh, you know, they've abandoned their integrity and are pretty much propagandists at this point. They're just, they've gone beyond their, their um, what they originally stood for, it seems to me, and just become a, a, a mouthpiece for our current president. But that aside, that's not really that even that important what we are seeing, though, and that is, that is one element of what we're seeing, is just propaganda in general. You, you can see this if you could take a step back when you're looking at, at various outlets of information, right? No matter where it's coming from. If you're able to, to, to get a little higher level view and see what are they pushing out every day, is it propaganda or is it truly, are they truly interested just in information? Are they using fear-mongering and scare tactics and every single day there's a new red alert and everything is about to end and the sky is falling, right? Or is it people who are just interested in information? Now, no matter who you are, no matter what organization you're, in, you're, you're part of or not a part of, all of us are going to be, whatever is even considered to be newsworthy is up to your opinion. It's up to your worldview. It's up to the, the way that you perceive the world, right? Some things that happen, you may not even consider to be newsworthy. Someone else might be based on their understanding of the world and what they think is important. So there's always going to be a bias coming through no matter what, no matter what. But there's a difference between the natural bias that we all have and a very strong concerted effort to push a particular narrative because that's just what you believe in, right? Now, obviously, when you come to church here, you are going to hear a narrative that has to do with Scripture, that has to do with the Bible. And I, I would think that would be obvious coming to a church, right? That this is where we're coming from, that it's the standpoint that this is true. So the worldview is this is the truth, and we're going to preach this book and apply it to the, to the rest of the world in light of this truth. And... Um, but that's not the way that we receive the rest of our worldly information, if you call it the news or anything like that. The vast majority of people, they don't have that view. So they're going to be coming from a different angle. But um, anyways, I don't want to get too far off on that either. What my point is, is we're supposed to be vigilant and on the lookout for satanic influences. And one of those influences is through propaganda. It's through this uh, instrument of, of hammering down a certain point to the, to, to the point where you might not believe it the first time or the second time or the third time, but they'll keep on hitting and hitting and hitting a point to get you to, to start to, to consider or change your mind or just to, to back off a little bit on what you know to be true. Because you, if you hear something often enough, what was it? there was a famous quote from Hitler, and I'm totally going to butch it, but it's like, um, talking about if you, if you tell people paradise is in hell or something like that, like the, the often enough, they'll believe it. If you a lie often enough, people will believe it, Right? And, um, and, and I, I don't remember the quote, but um, it's true. 
If you repeat something over and over and over and over and over again, in general, a mass amount of people will start to just accept it as being true. Oh, yeah, I've heard that before. You hear it once here, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's not true. Then you hear it again over here. No, 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 that's not true. Then you hear it again, maybe from a third source. And even without having any of your own you know, information, you, you'll, you'll stop resisting or challenging what you're hearing because if you hear it from, especially from multiple times and from multiple sources, you'll just start to accept it as, well, maybe this is true. And, and that's the way that propaganda works, is that they try to influence mass opinion by hammering it um, down, but it happens, over, it, it happens relatively gradually. It's not something that happens overnight. Now, what we have today is a very few amount of people who are controlling the narrative. And this is important to recognize also because even with the independent media that we have and, and this ability with the internet and so many people out there that could, that could report news and, and that could provide information and everything else, you'll notice that people are still talking about the same things. Why is that? Why is it that there, there, are, there are certain stories that just, this is what everybody's talking about. And many times, it's something stupid. It's something that doesn't really mean that much. It's, it you know, has to do with entertainment or has to do with something else. But you'll get, even these independent sources that have nothing to do with it, you know, it, it's one thing to see it coming from the CNNs and the MSNBCs and the Fox News, you know, these big corporations, these big media outlets that have billions of dollars that are owned by just a, you know, a, a relatively very small number of, uh, of people at the top that are operating these news organizations. It's one thing to see it from them, but see, they still have, a, even though a lot of people are kind of distancing themselves from those, those organizations, they're still controlling the narratives. They're still controlling the talking points. And um, we need to be aware of that. And, and, and to the sense that we're not getting caught up in these distractions from the real issue, because even the narratives themselves will help to change your opinion on things without you even realizing it. So Satan uses his false prophets to control the narratives in churchianity. He uses the big names in, 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 in you know, Christianity today or churchianity to do this. And subtlety is how the deception works. The closer he can make something look to the truth, the more believable it is. That's the way he operates. But my, my example of this, so we're talking about you know, controlled narratives and the controlled talking points and, and, and how does that impact your own thought process. Here, here's an example of that. When you're arguing over what trimester is unacceptable for abortions, you've already lost. They got you on the wrong thing. And, and, and you've already unwittingly just given up the right stand and, and, are, and are thinking about something that should never even come to that point. It doesn't even matter. Another example is when you're debating whether to bake a cake or to perform a sodomite marriage, you're, you're already way beyond the point. That the, it's, it's meaningless. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. Those aren't things that we ought to be focused on. We've already lost. 